What is up? Welcome back. This week we're in cruise mode, so we need to get some craft kits together for the cruise. And you can make these craft kits for workshops or craft shows. We're going to show you our top five light burn secrets to make batching kits faster and easier. And we're doing it all in light burn. Inside light burn, we'll start with importing our design. We'll use this SVG. And now I know I can save some board. I have to make 50 of these, but I can save some board. So I'm going to start by drawing a box. Let's put the box around this, see if it kind of fits. That kind of fits. That's good enough. We'll drag the box back up out of the way. We'll select everything. We'll go to Arrange, Nest Selected, and it'll open this website. We'll upload our SVG because it just sneakily exported this Lightburn SVG. Double click. Before I get started, I want to put some space between these because I would like to use some tabs to keep them in a board. So I'm going to need some meat for these to grab onto. We'll say like a two millimeter, we'll say three millimeter space. And let's explore some concave areas. I don't want parts and parts, not for this one. We'll save our settings. So this is what our SVG looks like. Now I want to select a bin, click on an outline to use as a bin. Well, this is that box that I drew. So I'm gonna click on this one and then I can start my nest. We could already save a bunch of area. Let's see what else it gives me. All right, well, it looks like this is all it's gonna save. We're on iteration seven. Ooh, seven, we'll stop the nest. We'll download this SVG. Back over to Lightburn. We'll click OK. And it opens up my download folder. And I'll select my new output. So you'll notice it deleted my old one. And I put my new one up here. Let's drag this down. So look, I saved a bunch of room over here. Let me resize my box. Now these are going to travel. So I need to hold them inside this little frame or this little box that I made so that they can travel. So to make sure that they will stay in this little box, I'm gonna use tabs. So first I'll group everything, highlight everything, control G to group it all. And I'll go over here to add tabs. Now there's two ways to do this. I can add my tabs manually, or since all of my tabs will be on this red area, in this red line, I can double click so over here, I can control my tabs. So right now I have tabs on. I would turn on tabs and bridges. I have it set to manual right now, but we can set automatic. And right now this is doing it by spacing. So every almost two inches, it will place a tab. But you see it gets a little messy. Look at all these tabs in here on these windows. I don't need those windows. Now I can also do it by tabs per shape. So it'll give each shape inside this box, or actually every shape, because it'll even put a tab on this outer box. It'll give everything one tab. We'll do this manually. So we'll say manual, okay. I'm gonna go over here to my little tab tool. We'll select it. We'll zoom in a little bit. Now I'll just start clicking areas that I think will help hold these pieces in place. So everywhere that I'm putting this little dot, the laser will skip it. And it'll skip it 0 0.0197 inches. So it's just a little thin tab. I'm just gonna give everything a tab. A couple of tabs. I wanna make sure these things stay. To delete a tab, like I don't need this tab, I can simply hold shift and then click the tab again and it'll be gone. Now that I think I have everything tabbed out correctly, I think it will stay in here. Now let's just make sure this one stays. 
Okay, now that I think I have everything tabbed out correctly, I will go to my settings area. Now I'm gonna use 20 millimeters per second, 45% power. This I know because I ran a test card. And I don't want my tabs to cut all the way through. So down here with tab cut power, if I set this to 45, it would cut on through. It would just cut right through the tab, thinking that it skipped it using this power. But I don't want the tab to be the full width of my material. So I'm gonna to try to cut it like maybe halfway through. So I'm gonna set my power, max power on these tabs. So when it goes to skip, it will actually just be skipping but cutting at 25% power. And we'll say okay. Now I need 50 of these guys. Now I need 50 of these little things, so I'm gonna use this array tool. And I can click up, so I have how many? Seven. So how many do I need this way? Seven times seven is 49. All right, well, that's close to 50. There's spaces and it's gappy. Let's check the cut time on this thing. So we'll say, with everything selected, we'll go Alt-P, which will bring up my cut path and I can actually play it and see how it will cut. I'm doing it in reverse now. It'll also tell you what your cut time is. So right now I'm at one hour and 55 minutes and 50 seconds. That's a, that's a little long. I think we can get that down. So let's close this window. Control Z, Control Z, Control Z, Control Z. We'll select this again and do our array one more time. We'll hit our array. Now for spacing, we're gonna set this to zero. And for Y spacing, we'll also set it to zero. Now we'll see how many rows, how many columns can I get? Uh, still get, I don't know, what is that? That's a total of 54 inches wide. Well, my board is only 40, so we'll back it down. So now it's at 47 and a half. So I know I'm gonna need seven tall. Oh, but look, it's a little shorter here. Right now it's only 27 inches tall, so let me see if I can squeeze another one, 32. So what's that, 54 of them? That, oh, here's my count, 56 right here. So it tells me my total width, my total size is 47 inches by 32 inches, and I have 56 of them. That works. Now I'll select everything and let's see what our cut time is. We'll Alt P. Whoa, we're at two hours and 12 minutes. That really went up. Okay, let's try to save some time. We'll go to optimize our settings. We'll cut in direction order. We'll reduce travel. We'll reduce some direction changes. And we're gonna remove overlapping lines. So right now, it's gonna cut each box, and even though these lines touch each other, it's gonna cut each box. But we're gonna remove overlapping lines, and we'll just keep this default distance. We'll say okay. Now it shouldn't cut these lines twice. Any lines that touch or, or within point, was it two five millimeters, it should get picked up and only cut one one of the lines. So let's see, we'll select everything. We'll go Alt-P. What's our cut time at now? One hour, 57 minutes. Let's, let's play this. Let's see how it kind of works down towards that corner. All right, and if you, let's play it and we can watch it so that it doesn't actually cut each box. It's just cutting the sides independently on each box. And it's working from the top left to the bottom right. Now it is slightly longer than our original cut time, but I got way more on one board. 
So it may be a little bit longer than our original cut time, which was one hour and 55 minutes. But remember, we just added seven more to this and it only added seven minutes. So I think it actually brought the cut time down, but we're able to get more on the board. Let's see what the cut time would be if I just selected the first 49 of them. We'll go all P. Oh yeah, one hour and 42 minutes. So we ended up saving 13 minutes in our cut time, in our original cut time, by grouping everything, removing overlapping lines. So yeah, I think that works. I'm gonna go cut a board and put it in the laser and get ready to cut. So I think we're ready. This is my score, blue is my score, and that's gonna be 200 millimeters per second at 25% power. And my cut setting is gonna be 20 millimeters per second at 45% power. We're gonna send this file over to our Aon Nova 14. We'll frame it and cut it out. Here it is, our little craft kit all packaged up, ready to go. We're gonna hand these out on the cruise ship and we're gonna do two craft days and this is one of them. It's a lanyard. 